Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. In this video I will show you the changes I've made to the engine since the last week. So first of all I've made small improvements to the light scattering effect. I made it a little more uniformly distributed across the screen by adding another blur pass which makes it look a little better as a volumetric light effect. The next thing I've been working on is optimizing the decal rendering a bit. And I was also trying to add the parallax effect to the decal rendering system, which at this point still has some issues with the rotation. The main topic this week was reworking the editor in the engine. I never showed the old system, but it was using bounding boxes to specify in which direction the entity should be edited. Also, I kinda hated the old system, so I finally reworked it this week. So, as you can see from the video, you can use axis aligned arrows to pick in which direction the entity should be translated. You can also hold the region between the axes to translate the entity into two different directions. I also plan to add translation along the plane oriented towards the camera, but at this moment it's still not working properly. So this is why when you click on all three axes nothing really happens. The next editing feature of the engine is rotation. The rotation is performed around the fixed axis, which I think it makes it easier to work with and it should also be more intuitive to artists using 3D modeling software like Blender. In the editor it's also possible to scale entities and again use the arrows to scale the entity in single direction but if you pick multiple axes you can scale it uniformly along all directions but if the need arises I will add scaling along two axes as well what I should also mention is that when picking all the axes when rotating will make the entity rotate around the camera direction the next important part to the editor is updating collision detection when you edit the entity. In this next clip I'm showing how the sun can be edited as well, but there is still a slight problem because the editing arrows kind of disappear in bright locations, so I still have to address that. But as you can see the shadows were also updated when the sun was moved. The next thing I've been working on is selecting multiple entities and editing them all at the same time. Also I need to make the editor use the average of objects location to make all the transformations around the center of selected entities. The next thing that I added that I thought would be useful is selecting all entities in the scene. And because every entity in the engine can be edited. I can perform all of the transformations on decals as well. But here it probably makes sense to only rotate the decal along a normal of the underlying surface. The next thing I also thought would be useful is the ability to delete certain entities. And in this scene after I delete the two objects, I'm also showing how the transition between editing and playing mode would look like. And as you can see, both of the objects start from their edited origin. In this next clip, I'm just showing how decals can be deleted as well. Another improvement I've made from the previous week is that decals can now be placed on almost any surface, with the exception of some weird corners. So this brings us to the end of this video. If you like the video, like it. And if you'd like to see more videos in the development log series, please subscribe to my channel. But before I go, there won't be an extensive video next week because tomorrow I'm going on a holiday for a week, so I won't be able to work on the engine very much. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!